Okay, I think we'll get started um, a little late because of our technical issues, but uh, hopefully we can have a good session. So thank you uh, very much to everyone for joining uh, us on, uh, this is our August edition of our Ask Tom uh, series on graph database and graph analytics. We restarted this session um, in April of this year. So if you go to a landing page, you should be able to see uh, most of our uh, sessions. All of our sessions are recorded and archived there along with the PowerPoint uh, slides. So uh, uh, please, if you haven't attended any of our earlier sessions, you can go and look at the, those sessions. We started with an introduction and then moved into some use cases and we did a session on graph query. In this session, we are focusing on graph analytics. And the Ask Tom page is also uh, it's a good starting point for other database technologies that are uh, featured in this Ask Tom series. So this is a great resource. Our standard safe harbor statement. So we are uh, joining you here today from different uh, opposite ends of the uh, globe. I will start off Bob, with an introduction to graph algorithms and graph use cases. And then Ryota will show you how you can run these algorithms using our product uh, today and some other advanced topics. So I'll start even before introducing graph algorithms, I want to do a recap because only when we have a graph that, that can, of course it makes sense, there's a context to talking about graph algorithms and analyzing a graph. So the product overview is that we've had this um, graph database at graph analytics that is a graph feature in Oracle database for a number of years now. So graph data model is a different way of looking at your data. It helps you look at your data through the connections and relationships between your data entities and analyze your, your data based on these connections and relationships. Graphs have a wide variety of applications in many different industries. We'll be seeing a few of them as we go through the session today. So as a uh, recap of the features uh, available as part of this in the Oracle database, we can store, manage, query, analyze graphs in an Oracle database. We also have a highly scalable in-memory graph server for high performance query and analysis analytics or uh, running analytics on the graph. So some of the graph operations can be compute intensive as we will see. So the in-memory graph server has specialized graph structures for running uh, these graph operations in parallel. This is not the database SGA. It's a separate uh, server that you stand up to run uh, queries and then to run analytics operations in, and uh, Riotta will be showing that in his part of this session. So when you represent your data as a graph, how do you query it? So to query that, we have the property graph query language, which is a very SQL-like language with extensions to, uh, to be able to specify graph patterns. And I'll show you a couple of examples. We're also participating in the standard that extends SQL to include graph patterns. Till that standard becomes available, we are supporting the PGQL uh, uh, graph query language. And then analytics, of course, which is the focus of the session. We also have visualization tools. We've talked about that in earlier sessions. So for graph database and analytics, you can store, you can query, you can analyze, and you can visualize. And the focus of the session is the, visual, the analytics part of it. So uh, continuing with the recap, a graph data model uh, is basically a collection of vertices and edges. And the vertices are the data entities in your data set, and the edges represent relationships between them. And the nice thing about graphs is almost any data set can be viewed as a graph, as a logical network or as a graph. For example, in this uh, example from a financial institution, you can have bank accounts as vertices, those would be the data entities in your data. And every time there's a cash transfer between these accounts, that can become an edge. So you can model almost any data set in this way as a graph, like in a product recommendation system, you can have when somebody buys a product from someone else, that can become an edge. And graph, you can mix and match different types of edges and different types of vertices. 
And with the, in the property graph data model, you can have properties associated with vertices and properties associated with edges. And then you can query your graph or find patterns in your graph based on these vertices and edges. So let me start by talking about how you can create a graph from database tables. So this is a simple example. And uh, the key point I want to emphasize here that it is possible to create a graph from your existing data that you have in your database. You don't need any specialized format. I mean, you can if you want to. We do support uh, graphs in various file formats, but you don't have to. You can create a graph from the data you have in your database tables. So here we have two tables, the accounts table, which has uh, account IDs, and you have the transactions table, which has the uh, information uh, related to cash transfers between accounts. So here this row says that you transferred money from account ID 1 to account ID 672 and the amount of transfers was 1000. So when you're using the property graph query language syntax, you can create a graph by specifying the vertex tables. In this case, this would be the vertex table where data entities naturally become vertices. And in this vertex table, each row will become a vertex in your graph. So each account ID becomes a vertex in your graph. And then you specify the edge table where you're saying that this is the source and the source vertex for this edge, the destination vertex for this edge, and then the property, because we're saying these are the, the, the amount column becomes the property. So you can specify that the columns in your table become properties for your edges or vertices. So each row in the transactions table will become a, a, an edge with the corresponding source and destination vertices. And you'll notice that I'm using the word label here. So the, these vertices are of type account and these vertices are of type um, transfer. And you can then filter on these properties and so on. So you can have different kinds of vertices and edges in a, in a graph. Uh, in this example, of course, all the edge information is contained in one table. It doesn't have to be that way. Your edge information can connect entities from different tables. So once you've figured out how to model your data as a graph, it's very easy to create the graph and either persist this in the database or directly load this into uh, the in-memory graph server. So when you execute uh, this create graph statement, you'll get a graph that looks like this. So you have, you have nodes, you have, and you have vertices, you have edges. So let's see now how we make sense of this graph. Right? How do we get some value out of this graph data model? So continuing with the recap on the querying, and we covered this extensively in the session last month. So we have the property graph query language, and that is you can use this query language to identify patterns that exist in your graph. For example, if you want to find out whether this pattern exists, starting let's say from node 259, does this pattern exist in your graph? You can specify that using this uh, query and you can see that it's similar to SQL in terms of having a select clause, a where clause, and so on. It has the additional match clause that specifies the pattern. So that's how you, because you need to be able to specify patterns in a graph. So this is an example for a, of a query that specifies a triangle in a graph. And here is another example of another pattern where you're saying I'm starting from 528 and I want to see whether there are two cash transfers or two edges going in from this vertex. And here's how you would specify the query in the property graph query language. So when you're looking for patterns in your graph, uh, you, that's when you, you're looking for querying and your patterns can be cycles, it can be paths, like I want to see whether there's a path between these two nodes, and of this path, I want to see whether this path is one to six hops, or any, this particular query is saying it can be any distance between one and six hops different way of specifying the path query. I want to find the top two shortest paths. And then you can also specify more uh, complex patterns. So you can find patterns in your graph using the graph query language. So with that, now let's come to graph algorithms. What can graph algorithms do for you? Why do businesses find it valuable to run graph algorithms on their data? So, well, uh, the, well, the PGQL queries or any graph query helps you find patterns in your graph. What the graph algorithms do is to help you analyze your full graph. 
look at all the edges and all the vertices in your graph and identify relationships between them and identify additional features based on the structure of the graph. So you can, when you analyze your graph, you can derive information about the structure of the graph, such as what is the value of a particular vertex in relation to other vertices. And it can be simple centrality, right? How many vertices are connected to this particular vertex? Or it can be something uh, more complex like page rank, where you're not just looking at how many vertices are connected to this vertex, but you're looking at the import or the page rank values of those vertices as well. In other words, a vertex will have a page, high page rank value if it is connected to other vertices which also have a higher page rank value. So you can see here that this would be an iterative or more like a recursive process going through all the vertices in a graph and identifying the page rank value and building up the page rank value for every vertex in the graph. So you're looking at the full graph and, and determining how they're connected. And the page rank values typically, a page rank algorithm will return a numeric value between zero and one. And you use that as a measure for how important this vertex is in your graph. Higher page rank value means you have a, it's a more important vertex in the graph, and we'll see some use cases of why that is interesting to businesses. In the between a centrality case, uh, you're looking for vertices which are on uh, the paths that connect, uh, which are on the higher, highest number of higher number of paths connecting other vertices. So it's on more paths than other vertices. In other words, if you uh, remove uh, this particular node from the graph, then this graph could get uh, disconnected or at least have weaker links. So the vertices that are on many other paths between other vertices, again, give you a between a centrality value for the vertex. And again, it's a numeric value. You, once when you analyze the graph, you get a numeric value and this value becomes a property of the vertex in our product. So you run the page rank algorithm, you run the between a centrality algorithm, you get a value that becomes a property for the vertex in the graph, and then you can query the graph based on these properties. Another class of algorithms is finding uh, paths in your graph. Finding the, is there a path between two vertices? What is the shortest path between two vertices? What is the fattest part between two vertices where you have some kind of a value associated with each edge in a path? And the total, uh, and you would, you take the number of edges, multiply by those values and say, this is the capacity on this part, the number of hops in a path. And how tightly or how sparsely is a graph connected? So when we take a tightly connected graph, that means every node in this graph is connected with every other node. So in graph theory terms, they call this a strongly connected graph. Uh, or is it less? Or is, is it less uh, sparsely? Uh, uh, is it less tightly connected? Is it more sparsely connected? So that's that tells you a lot of things about your data when you view it as a graph. Is every node connected to every other node, or are there some isolated vertices which are just standalone and not really connected to anything else? These tell you some, uh, give you some insights into the graph, and we will see some. Uh, use cases uh, here. And also, you can also evaluate the structure of the graph itself in a few other ways, but I'm, I'm focusing on the three popular algorithms that we see being used. So this is the 50 or 50 algorithms that we have. They're all invoked through a Java API, a Python uh, API is planned. And uh, you can see here the different categories, the detecting communities, uh, and then detecting uh, the important vertices by running the page rank and between the centrality type algorithms, finding paths, evaluating structures, like how many triangles do you have, detecting cycles and so on. So there are many different, um, uh, these are the, all the different algorithms that we have, and you can invoke all of them very easily in your Java application, like I said, it's a Java API. And, and analyze your graph. You don't have to write these algorithms and so on. So you have a list of powerful algorithms available to you. And in path finding, you might re remember from your graph theory class, the, there are different flavors of uh, doing, getting the shortest path, right? Bellman, Ford, Dijkstra, and so on. And all of these are supported. So I'm going to go into the business use cases. I'm just going to take a look at the chat. Uh, since that, okay, uh, please, your session is recorded. Okay, uh, uh, Riotta is answering. Thank you, Riotta. So I don't need to pause there. Um, 
So uh, let's look at some business use cases here. Oh, I went back by mistake. Okay. So the first uh, business set of business use cases uh, are around that I want to talk about are around uh, the importance of vertices. Why is it uh, important for uh, businesses to look at their uh, graph this way and run like a page rank algorithm or a between a centrality algorithm? So financial institutions, when they model their cash transfers as a graph, are very interested in knowing through which accounts most of the money flows. Uh, because that could be an indication that something fraudulent is going on. If there are very few accounts through which most of the money flows, or it might tell them something else about their graph, about the customer behavior, about the why that particular vertex is important. And uh, they also want to, uh, they, they really want to identify, for example, here, these are screenshots from one of our customers where they were identifying nodes that were connected to the uh, larger number of nodes, which indicated that a lot of people are transferring money to this account. Or in this case, they had lots of users, lots of accounts transferring money to one account, and then this one account is making one bulk transfer to another account. So you can run the page rank algorithm, visualize the graph. You can then say, after you run the page rank algorithm, you can say, I want to now select from my graph the vertices with the highest page ranks, so and then visualize them. So by doing operations like this, they're able to identify the key accounts that they need to either look at more closely, or maybe this is an important customer they can pay more attention to, and so on. In retail, uh, if you look at it from a point of view of a social network, this is uh, the the, uh, the vertices with the highest page rank values are likely to be the influencers in the social network. So if you have a group of customers who are connected to each other, and if you know that some customers have bought this product, they're likely to recommend the product to others, or the others are likely to maybe be more influenced by them. And in the law enforcement example, uh, perhaps you have different sets of bad actors, and you're modeling all the information about them as a graph, like whether they're how they're traveling, I mean, the different bad actors, you want to get the travel patterns, you're looking at advanced passenger information systems, you're gathering all of this data. And when you model this data as a graph, you might find that you have some nodes connecting these different sets of bad actors and all paths between these two different groups are going through some central uh, vertices. So these then become the key vertices that law enforcement can look at more closely because these are combining the different sets of bad actors. So that's where the between a centrality comes in. So by viewing the data as a graph, they're able to get these insights by just looking at how important their vertices are. So looking at the parts example uh, in telecommunications and other industries, network management is an important uh, use case. And they want to model their network so that IP networks could consist of routers and bridges and other components. So when modeling the data as a graph, they're able to uh, do an what-if analysis, like what happens if my router fails? By look, doing a path analysis and looking at all the other components connected to this particular, uh, this particular vertex, they're able to look at the impact of uh, what would happen if one thing fails. And you can see that this can apply in other use cases as well. What happens if one vertex disappears? What is the impact on the graph? And for that, I need to understand all the paths that are connected to uh, this particular uh, vertex. And in fin the financial industry, is there a cash transfer between these two accounts? There might not have been a direct cash transfer between these two accounts, but there might have been a path between two accounts that that indicates that there could have been a cash transfer between accounts. And that again is helpful for detecting fraud. So, and you can see that often there are multiple paths between vertices. So here I've highlighted one path and you can see here, there's one more path between the same two accounts. And if you're doing some kind of a money laundering operation or so on, this is what happens. People would route money through other accounts and then come back to the, uh, to the destination account. So, they, is there a, so is there a path between these two accounts? In manufacturing, uh, we are uh, talking to customers who are modeling the bill of materials as a graph to be able to do a dependency analysis. Uh, for example, if you take a car manufacturing plant, a car has around 
30,000 parts, each car is 30,000 parts. It's a complex set of interconnections between the components that make up a car. So if something changes, if there's something that changes in one of the components, they want to understand the financial uh, impact of uh, all the other, uh, by financial impact of changing that part by looking at all the other components that are dependent on this component to get an understanding of all the other components that would be impacted as well. And once again, this is a reachability analysis. You want to find out all the components connected to this particular component, and that's again a path analysis. So looking at your data as a graph and doing a path analysis again has a number of use cases. And the last example I want to talk about is detecting communities. Uh, with uh, when it comes to be, when you view your data as a graph and by communities, what as I was saying earlier, these are tightly connected subgraphs within the graph. And once again, you can see that the fraudster theme is ongoing here. So financial institutions are really looking at graphs as a way to identify fraudulent cases to give them an edge over other types of analytics. So uh, this again is some uh, examples from one of our customers. Uh, and they're saying that, okay, we want to see whether this particular uh, account that we think is suspicious is connected to other fraudsters. Do they all belong to the same community? So if you have a community of user accounts that have been involved in fraudulent activities or have a history of that, and this, this, if you find that this new account also belongs to that community, by whatever measure you're using to determine the community and determine the connections. If this new customer user belongs to this community, maybe this user is, is also has some, uh, could be fraudulent too. So maybe you want to look, look at that more closely. And the other thing they did was they determined communities by looking at the number of devices, by looking at the devices these customers were using to make cash transfers. And of course, when uh, you can form communities based on the devices they're using, based on the IP addresses they're using. And when you get a community of users like that, they felt that the more tightly connected a subgraph is, the more suspicious it is. They feel that uh, when, there, when there's a tightly connected sub community having lots of cash transfers, it's something that they really want to track further. And finally, uh, retail. Uh, so uh, customers that buy, uh, the same products could uh, cluster together and who have the same buying patterns could cluster together and form a community. And that can be used to predict churn. Like if, if, the, if all of these customers are subscribing to a certain plan and somebody is going to leave, is uh, leaving the subscription, then perhaps other people connected to them might also leave. It could be friends and family in a social network context, or it could be customers that are connected together in other ways. So this helps folks predict that, okay, there might be, we might lose customers here. And conversely, if customers uh, in this particular group are buying a product, maybe other customers that are tightly connected to them are also likely to buy this product. So it's very interesting and very important for businesses to try, to try to identify who in their graph are more tightly connected to each other. So with that, let me hand this over to Ryota for showing you some real examples. Over to you, Ryota. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining. In the latter session of this session, uh, I will show a small demo how to run algorithms and briefly tell why Oracle Property Graph architecture is beneficial in scalability and fitting actual business uh, use cases. As always, I have set up a demo environment on Docker containers and uploaded to my GitHub. Uh, it is uh, updated uh, for using the latest 20.3 packages. You can easily set up Oracle database and graph seven client on your laptop or cloud instance, etc. cetera. Uh, just uh, cloning the repository and download the packages and extract them. And then uh, uh, build the Docker containers using the Docker compose command. Then uh, you can get graph server as well as separating uh, notebook environment. The uh, algorithms can be run from JShell 
uh, graph client or Tepeli notebook. I will use uh, JShell for this demo today, uh, but you can also download uh, the Tepeli note from the same repository. The interpreter for Apache Tepeli notebook is uh, provided as a package and Groovy syntax, it is actually Java syntax, is supported. Uh, Python API is also planned. Uh, so once we've got Python API, uh, we can also use uh, Jupyter Notebook as well as uh, Python interpreter on Tepperine. We can run algorithms uh, using uh, this kind of command like analyst class has a page rank method against graph called graph2. Then after running algorithms, the results are often stored into the graph itself. So in this case, each uh, node gets a new property called page rank and its score. So um, users can easily access the results using PGQL queries, uh, like in this uh, query. So um, A is a node, which is, uh, has brackets, and then uh, A has page rank property after running the algorithm. Then you can also visualize the result. Um, log in, you can log in to the uh, graph visualization tool uh, with the same session ID. Then uh, the, uh, the, 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 the new properties called PageRank is uh, all attached on those graph uh, nodes. So the size of nodes can be uh, linked to the page rank score or well, using the highlight, uh, you can change the size of nodes according to the page rank score. Let's uh, try running some algorithms. Some of you might have seen this demo uh, on Zeppelin notebook before. So I will use JShell this time using some of new features of our graph visualization tool too. You can access to this learning library uh, from this link. I uh, send that link uh, to the chat in the beginning of this session. The first algorithm I would like to run is a um, well-known page rank against this uh, very small graph. And uh, for getting this graph from heterogeneous graph, uh, we can use a graph filter for getting a homogeneous graph, uh, which uh, has nodes all connected uh, by the same link uh, with the Ravel transfer. And then uh, we can run uh, analyst page rank. Then, as I said, uh, we can get the result as a uh, uh, using, using PGQL query. The second algorithm we would like to run is one of uh, community detection algorithm, uh, strongly connected component. Uh, we call this SCC. And after running this uh, algorithm, all these nodes have uh, a new property called SCC Kosaraju, which uh, contain um, the component ID which uh, generated after this, uh, after running this algorithm. So in this case, um, a strongly connected component can find those uh, nodes which uh, uh, are reachable from every other account. So, so in this community, uh, all nodes are reachable from other uh, nodes in this community. So uh, for finding such a tight community among uh, the, the large size of the network, uh, we can use this algorithm. The third thing I want to try is a making recommendation using a personalized page rank, uh, which is sometimes called PPL. Uh, to generate, or let's say uh, we like to 
know uh, which product we should uh, recommend to this uh, person, which has this account actually, uh, to generate uh, a recommendation. One simple method is to use uh, random walking. The random walker always uh, starts walking from the node 201 and randomly move to connected nodes in a certain hops and then disappear. Every time when random walker hop on the nodes, it gives them scores. Then it repeats this walking many, many times from this node. At the end, uh, closer nodes like these nodes should have uh, got more scores than uh, nodes which are far from this starting point. Then uh, we can expect that uh, tightly connected uh, products are closer to this uh, node. And let's say this one is uh, a little far from the starting point. So we should recommend something like this than uh, uh, this product. Okay, let's uh, move to the uh, JShell client. And I have memo here. Okay, so um, before, uh, There's a, okay. Okay, before uh, uh, running the gesture client, we can get the uh, token uh, for authentication. Uh, so uh, you have uh, uh, oh, this authentication method uh, connected to graph uh, database user um, of Oracle database is uh, introduced from the latest version of uh, Graph7 client 20.3. And we can provide the username and password uh, to Graph server, and we can get the to access token uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to log in to the Graph server. So once you get uh, this uh, access token, you can uh, run uh, Graph client connecting connecting to graph server, and you will be asked to provide this token. Oh, it is taking time. Yep. So you can log in to. Uh, graph server. And now you can check the uh, session ID because you can have multiple sessions using the same username password authentication. So this is the session ID. Then uh, you can uh, get a preloaded graph on graph server. So this graph is now attached to the uh, graph server on the memory of, uh, uh, oh, sorry, graph on memory of graph server. You can access to this graph from the visualization tool here. And in this case, um, you can provide username, password, as well as the session ID here. So this session uh, will be uh, assumed to be the same session um, as the one in JShell. So now you can see a customer 360 graph here. I want to uh, get all the edges and nodes here and provide highlights get a pretty view. Now, uh, 
for running page rank algorithm, you would like to remove some um, unnecessary nodes like merchants because we would like to know the uh, relationships between those accounts uh, uh, in, in, uh, in terms of the, the relationships of uh, money transfer. So for doing that, uh, we can run a graph filter against uh, transfer edges. And then we can create new graph, uh, which is a subgraph of uh, the original graph, graph two. Run this here. And now you've got uh, graph two on this shell. Uh, with uh, uh, six nodes and eight edges. You can access to the same uh, subgraph from uh, this visualization once you refresh uh, the screen because you are sharing the same session. Uh, now you can see uh, the additional graph called graph two. And you can confirm that uh, your graph is a homogeneous graph, which consists of uh, only accounts and money transfer edges. So let's uh, run uh, page rank algorithm against this graph. After running this algorithm, you've got a page rank property uh, for all nodes on the, of this graph. So you can check the scores and actually the re this result is sorted by the page rank. So the top uh, page rank result uh, as uh, well, this one, uh, two, zero, one, should have the, the top page rank, highest page rank uh, is this one actually. So you might uh, want to access to the, res uh, to, to, to the uh, page rank uh, score from this visualization. Uh, let's refresh this screen again. and open the same graph. And right click this node 201. And now you can see the uh, page rank property is added here. So if you want to, you can change the highlight and for changing the size of the nodes according to this uh, page rank, let's say 0 to 0 to 0.5 and size should be modified. So now you can see uh, this account has the highest um, page rank score while this account doesn't have uh, any uh, incoming edge, which means uh, this uh, account uh, couldn't get any points scores from other uh, accounts. For other two uh, algorithms, one is uh, community detection. You can use the same subgraph and uh, you can uh, and 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 we we could learn uh, a uh, strongly connected component algorithms against this graph too. And now you've got uh, SCC Kosaraju uh, new node property, 
you can see that uh, the algorithm uh, detected three components on this graph. And obviously these uh, four red nodes are connected each other and reachable each other. And other two uh, separate uh, component uh, zero and two. For running the uh, third algorithm, personalized page rank for uh, recommendation, uh, we can get uh, another uh, subgraph, uh, which is filtered by uh, purchased edges, because we, we, we need the uh, product purchase subgraph for making the recommendation. So run this again. There's something wrong. Okay, let's start with uh, attaching the graph again. Okay, now uh, we've got uh, graph three. And then uh, create, uh, we need uh, reverse vertices, uh, sorry, reverse edges are uh, called purchased by. We need, uh, uh, we, we have only purchasing, uh, purchased edge, has purchased edge right now. But uh, for running these algorithms, we need, uh, uh, we always need reverse edges. Um, so otherwise random walkers cannot uh, come back to uh, the, the, the nodes. Then uh, we can confirm those reverse edges are uh, generated. Then uh, this is a, a command for running page rank or personalized page rank against this particular vertex, vertex 201. So finally, uh, running this PGQL query again. Uh, you can get the list of uh, recommended uh, products, uh, which is sorted by uh, the page rank. So you should be able to access to the uh, product recommendation graph as well as graph three. Now you can see this is a bi bipartite graph and for making recommendation for this person 201, uh, we should uh, the recommendation told us that uh, we should recommend Kindle Store or Asia Books uh, for this person. This one and this one should have uh, uh, the, the page rank. Okay, let's go back to the slides. I have uh, introduced three algorithms and uh, their usages. Uh, but as Mary mentioned, uh, we have uh, more than 50 uh, algorithms and their variants on uh, graph server. So you can check the list of graph uh, algorithms uh, from this documentation. And then once you click one of the algorithms, you can um, go to the uh, the, the, the description of each algorithm. And you can also find the link to uh, Javadoc page. So for running uh, those algorithms on a J shell or Groovy shell or a Zeppelin, uh, you can refer this example uh, for each uh, algorithm.
at the end of this presentation, let me talk about the actual graph analytics workflows in industries. As we have explained in this session and the last session uh, last month, uh, graph analytics needs two uh, different types of graph processing. One is graph query and another is uh, graph algorithm. And uh, Oracle Graph Server supports both. Uh, one interesting observation is that uh, we often need data size scalability in algorithm side, while the response time is very important in the query side, of course. When we have a question like uh, uh, in social network, like in Twitter, uh, which is the account in three steps from my account and has the highest page rank among them? In this case, we have to run the algorithm first uh, on the whole network. And then uh, we need to uh, get the, uh, the, the, the friends in three hops. If you uh, do it in other way around, if you, if you run query to get the, your friends first and then run algorithm, uh, you must be uh, always the most important node uh, among the subgraph because you are in the center, right? So um, this order is, is somehow very important and which means that uh, we need a scalable uh, graph algorithm environment as well as a graph query capability uh, for a graph analytics platform. In actual industry use cases, I can observe two patterns in the analytics workflow. Uh, pattern one is for finding significant nodes uh, in a whole uh, network. Uh, for example, in uh, financial fraud detection, they have a, a very large network. Uh, of uh, uh, money transfer between those accounts. And they need to run arg graph algorithms for scoring all nodes using or ranking arg algorithms like uh, centrality page rank or community detection algorithms, whether those accounts are close to a known uh, fraud account or not, etc. Then we can find more and more features about that particular account. So the scores, like those, those new features, if those, are, if those are bank accounts uh, are sharing personal information, fraud community uh, belongs to those community or uh, close to other fraud accounts, such features are useful for finding, well, high score nodes, of course, but uh, we cannot really detect or, 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 or decide uh, this node is fraud account only because of the, you know, uh, let's say page rank. So we need to get uh, more and more features using many algorithms. And then uh, we can use those features uh, as, as conditions in graph query and as um, machine learning input for improving the performance of machine learning to detect um, those fraud accounts and to see uh, which features are actually important for uh, prediction. The same workflow uh, can be observed in uh, tax fraud detection, influencer detection in social analysis, uh, network analysis, abnormal behavior dete detection in cyber security, which IP address is uh, you know, sending those messages and receiving those messages from other uh, network devices uh, and scoring imp importance of uh, devices in actual networks like uh, electricity networks and communication networks. Uh, we can uh, add more and more features to those devices and uh, communication um, um, uh, devices so that uh, um, we can use those information for um, a query and machine running. 
um, in our experience, we also find uh, the pattern to uh, enabling advanced queries, such as uh, in real-time recommendation, um, the applications have to know the uh, recommendation for one particular person in real time. In this case, uh, the application can select one specific node and run graph algorithms against this node. For example, personalized page rank algorithm uh, needs the starting point for random walking, right? And, and we can also uh, consider using community detection algorithms, whether this person is in the same, is in, is in uh, the same community as others. Or, or we can select two uh, points of interest uh, and run reachability analysis between them. So these things are uh, uh, enhancing the query result and simple um, PGQL query can actually uh, find some reachability and 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 uh, uh, we can put uh, conditions on or using using where crows and match crows, but at the same time, combining with uh, those algorithms, we can think of more advanced uh, queries, like in in, in reachability analysis, and uh, we can think of the recommendation real time recommendation, and we can find other members in the same community in real time which is useful for fraud and crime analysis. So in each uh, patterns of analytics workflow, uh, we need the capability for running the algorithms against the graph itself, the whole graph. At the same time, we need the um, query capability to uh, retrieve the results. Finally, I would like to mention that uh, Graph Server even supports running the custom uh, graph algorithms. PGX algorithm is a uh, Java syntax language to write custom graph algorithms. Uh, PGX uh, itself has a, uh, a DSL called Grimo, uh, and it is described here, but uh, as a product, we support uh, the custom algorithms written in PGX algorithm. The specification of this language is also available from this link. And also those um, uh, built-in algorithms, they have their implementation uh, on the each page. So you can check the uh, implementation of the uh, built-in algorithms and you can modify and custom for uh, your usages. One uh, example use case of uh, uh, custom algorithms in uh, real industry is uh, that uh, 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 the, the um, we, we have experienced this uh, in, uh, uh, P, in an actual POC. Some of the calculation processes can be optimized in uh, manufacturing bill of material analysis. So um, in this case, uh, this uh, part has subparts like part ABC and ABC has DEFG. And in this case, a uh, simple calculation, like summing up the number of, of parts in this tree uh, can be uh, really enhanced uh, by introducing the uh, graph algorithms, custom graph algorithms on graph server. Because we can uh, run uh, traversal uh, algorithms from this particular node and then one breath first search can calculate the 
number of all parts and the result is like this uh, can be uh, stored and keep the uh, kept in uh, the nodes as node properties so, uh, let's say uh, uh, for part G we need to since it's parts four uh, we need we need parts uh, four uh, parts uh, for for this part so uh, we can uh, find the number of part G uh, for by multiplying uh, 4 and 10, right? So uh, this calculation is very simple, uh, but uh, um, writing uh, custom um, algorithms, we can en even enhance uh, those uh, calculations. Okay, so um, this is the end of uh, the session today. Uh, we have a lot of uh, helpful links in this slide and uh, I'm gonna upload these slides uh, onto the uh, Ask Tom page. We, you can reach out to us uh, using Twitter or LinkedIn. And as Melly mentioned, we are uh, regularly holding this Ask Tom office hour once a month and we are planning to have a, a session about the, the, the security and access control of graph next month so um, please um, subscribe uh, to this office hour so that uh, you'll be notified uh, for the next uh, about the next session the next session title thank you everyone for joining us and see you next month yeah, thank you very much. And feel free to reach out to us with any questions or comments yep. that you have using various forums that Riotta mentioned. Thank you. Oh, did you?